Uh, hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the imminent eruption of volcano or magma uh, river in Iceland. It's been in the news for about two weeks now. Uh, it's near the town of Grindavik um, in southwest Iceland, maybe 40 kilometers uh, south of the airport Keflavik, um, maybe 60-70k uh, from Reykjavik, the capital there. So let's take a look uh, what we're talking about here. Um, Iceland, as you all know, great tourist de uh, destination, wonderful travel destination. I've only been once and it's been a while and it's been on my list. Um, we know that uh, it's volcanic. We know that it um, sits basically right at the, at the juncture of the, the two plates in the North Atlantic Ocean. We're going to zoom in a little bit here to Grindavisk, Grindavik. And, and what Grindavik is known for, it's a town of about 3,500 people, 3,700 people. Um, all of them have been evacuated now. Um, some people are being let back in little by little to grab a few more things as they monitor the situation. Um, but what we see, it's a coastal town, it's a port, it's a fishing village. Um, when we say 3,700 people, you think, hmm, that's not that much. But Iceland's a, a small country. I think they have less than 400,000 people. I'll double check that in a sec. But so 3,700 is 1% of the country. So, you know, you take that into the States, that's like saying we evacuated 3.4 million people, you know, 1%. one percent. But what's really um, known by most tourists for this part of the, the country is the Blue Lagoon. Uh, the Blue Lagoon is a, a famous uh, tourist attraction. Um, you know, hot springs and uh, whatnot. And, you know, there's, you, you go on Google Maps here and you see that it's just like, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of pictures um, showing this, this beautiful um, location where all the seismic activity has led to this, this hot spring. And um, you, you can just see how many people um, we'll come out here. There's even a, a power plant here we can see in the background and I, I know they've been talking about that as well because uh, they use the geothermal energy to generate power here. So um, it's just one of those places where you would hate to see that um, get disrupted. So uh, how did all of this start? Um, well, what they, they started to um, monitor just a, a couple weeks ago is this incredibly high um, number of, of earthquakes. And, and you can see this concentration down here in, in the southwest corner. Um, literally thousands of, of earthquakes. Um, there is actually a website here, um, vafri.is, so vafri.is, um, which is the Icelandic, um, I guess, seismology um, department that is monitoring all of this. And what you can see is this, again, this concentration um, of earthquakes. And this is, if I look here, 15 dagger, which I believe is 15 days. Um, and I think, well, Maybe it's 15 minutes um, because there literally have been thousands. And if you look here on the, all right, it's jumping on me. You look here, you can see the list and there, you know, the stair, which I guess is the, um, the size of the earthquake, the depth um, in kilometers, the uh, magnitude here, uh, the exact time. And you can see they're just, they're coming in every few minutes, uh, basically. So uh, a really good website here. Um, all of the stuff that I'm referencing in the video today will be in the description down below, so take a look. Um, and if you're new to the channel, you came across this because you're interested in what's going on in, in Iceland, um, but also interested in, in travel, uh, please take some time to look around my channel, like, subscribe, um, and hopefully I'll put out some content that's interesting for you. Um, so yeah, a really good website to, to watch what's going on here. Um, Iceland, of course, has a, a tremendous history of um, volcanic eruptions. I think it was back in um, 2012 or 13, uh, 2010. Yeah, 
It was a 10, 2010, and, and if you do some Google search, you'll see this um, Aya Fiela Yukul, which is the name, and uh, basically it was a huge volcanic eruption with a huge ash cloud. And the ash cloud was so severe um, that it disrupted air travel in, in much of Western Northern Europe for, um, I guess, for a couple of weeks. Um, so um, much, much more dangerous than what's going on right now because it's very different you know it was an ice cap um, when it blew uh, you had a lot of this instant um, degradation of the ice cap a uh, huge ash cloud that went right up into the atmosphere i remember stories from back then of airplanes um, passing near or even through during the early phases and and landing and having all kinds of damage from going through it you know five six hundred miles an hour um, through this ash and really having the fuselage just torn up on the sides with, with scratch marks from this. Um, so again, uh, if you want to look at the history of the eruption from 2010 and what happened there, um, check the link here. This Wikipedia link will give you a really nice um, description of that. Um, if you want to watch a little bit more uh, live as this whole story unfolds, um, the website here, the ruv.is, again, link below. Um, they've set up webcams in the area. Um, you can see here, and, and I think what, what we'll get as this thing gets closer to um, an eruption of some kind. Now, from what I've read, and I'll get to um, this geologist in a second that I've been following for the last 10 days um, because his, his analysis is so good on this is that I believe what we're talking about is we're talking about a subterranean river of magma um, that's quite long, several miles long. And when they started looking months ago or weeks ago, uh, they noticed that it was a, a couple kilometers below the surface, so a mile or two down. And now um, what I've read and seen is that it's within a, a couple hundred feet or a couple hundred meters of the surface. And the question is, where will it break the surface? Um, if it breaks the surface far up to the northeast, as we, you know, we look at the, the video here from this is the guy, uh, Sean Wilsey, um, a geologist, and he's done a great job. You can see here running through uh, southwest to northeast is where this underground subterranean um, river of magma is. So uh, a lot of what he talks about, especially in this video, and that'll be linked below as well, is that if it erupts up here, of course you're gonna have a lot more damage from lava flow, magma flow, um, down to the south and east as it comes down the hill towards the ocean here. Um, of course, the risk to the Blue Lagoon um, tourist attraction here, these hot springs in the power plant, uh, is greater if um, this magma vent does open up further up. Of course, if it opens up right near the town, the town already going through an awful lot of damage um, from buckling and, and uh, settling and raising up of, of the land. Um, there are quite a few pictures and videos out there where, where we've seen um, a lot of that. And I think if we, if you go through some of his videos here, uh, you can see the, you know, the, there's some serious um, sinking and, and raising of, of the ground, of the earth, uh, in the town of, of Grindavik. So um, I think something to definitely keep an eye on there to see where this thing opens up. The other thing he's talking about, uh, right about um, this point and then again uh, later on here in the, in the video, is that if the vent opens up, um, it, and this flow is into the ocean directly, there's going to be something that he describes as kind of this, this super high temperature flash igniting or exploding of the lava when it comes into contact with the cold water. So super hot, very cold, um, and you're going to get a lot more of, a, of an explosive kind of event, not in the sense of a, a volcanic, you know, um, mountaintop exploding like Mount St. Helens or something like that, but you'll get something that maybe we see more in, in Hawaii when you see lava flows coming into the ocean. So um, 
maybe not as dramatic as the, the huge explosion of the ice cap um, in 2010, but uh, definitely when you see the size of this, um, basically taking up much of this um, peninsula, um, it, it should be pretty fascinating to watch. And what I've read is that there's even some talk to try to trigger um, an opening of some kind into the magma flow to get this thing moving. Uh, I don't know if that's because uh, the longer it takes, the more buildup there could be, the more potential for danger there could be. Um, I'm going to keep following uh, this guy, Sean Wilsey, and a few others uh, that I've been watching to, to see what's going on, um, if that's actually a viable option or not. But I think it's going to be pretty, pretty darn interesting um, to see what happens here. Um, like I said, Iceland's on my list. I want to go there. I was hoping for next summer. Um, this Blue Lagoon was one of the things on my list. Um, you know, there's also a tremendous um, gravel biking. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm really into the cycling and the gravel biking. And that was another reason to go see all the volcanoes, do a lot of trekking, do a couple of days of bike packing maybe, um, and make this a really a great adventure because it's one of these really raw, rugged, places in the world that um, I think you just have to see. Um, I know it's really accessible from the U.S. these days. Iceland Air is flying from several U.S. cities. I know um, there's even a, a nonstop from Seattle, I believe, um, which is my base for a long time. Um, New York, actually the first time I ever went to Iceland, I went through uh, from New York to, to Iceland, to Luxembourg, back when Iceland Air was still a really young airline way back in the day. Um, so, you know, Iceland, Iceland Air, I think, also does really cool packages where you can buy your ticket and actually book a two or three day stopover with no increase in the, in the airfare. So, again, link to the Iceland Air uh, vacation um, deals, not vacation deals so much, but flight with stayover deals um, down in the description below. And, you know, let's, let's, let's see how, how this thing goes. Um, you know, we're sitting here uh, 10 minutes or so, and, and there's even been a, an earthquake in the last eight minutes now. So um, this site is vafri.is, super, super cool. Um, it, really, it really shows the lines uh, nicely of where, where a lot of this tectonic uh, plates and activity is happening. Um, and of course, not just for that little part of of Iceland, but you know, if you if you zoom out, you get to see the whole the whole country here. Um, so fascinating stuff. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how it progresses, um, and I will probably be following up in in my shorts, um, YouTube shorts, um, as we start to see some of the first um, erupt eruptive activity when we start to see some magma flowing. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, use this as a resource. Check out all those links below, um, you know, to keep, keep yourself up to date and like, and subscribe and, and we'll, we'll see you soon.